Hey everyone, welcome back to another video here on the channel. In this video, we're gonna be talking about how to avoid that big spark when we connect our lithium polymer battery pack up to our electronic speed control, the ESC of our system. Not only is this spark quite alarming, but it is also very damaging to the connectors upon repetitive use and continuously getting that spark. Within this video, I'm gonna show you exactly what that sounds like. I'm gonna show you why it's actually bad and how it actually hurts your connectors. Then we're gonna take a look at the process to go through and fix this concern. And I'm even gonna talk about the connectors connector that we're going to replace the current connectors with in order to eliminate that spark and how it actually functions and works. So not only are we learning all these things in the video, but I'm also going through the extremely painful process of completely switching my old use, old connectors on all the battery packs and speed controls that I have over to this new style. Let's first start off by plugging in an 8S battery pack into our speed control. Here is what we want to avoid. So we have an 8S rated speed control and we have 8S lithium polymer battery pack here on our right hand side. And this is what happens when we go and plug this setup in. I'm sure you heard that, that is quite loud in terms of the actual spark and noise that we get here. This is exactly what we want to avoid. As you can see, and I'll show a close up, you get a whole bunch of burn marks right in the connector because of what we just saw with that spark and that loud popping noise. Now these are the connectors that this setup uses. They're 5.5 millimeter bullets, and I've been using these since probably around the 2006-7 mark. Now what I want to do is move towards a connector that offers this anti-spark type feature. This is a connector that has it as denoted by the green markings here. This is an XT90 connector. However, this connector is not going to be best suited for the amount of power that I plan to pull. So I'm gonna put this off to the side. Now this is the connector after asking multiple people at the flying field what they are using. This is the one that was the most recommended. And this is what we're going to be doing today, swapping out all the 5.5 millimeter bullets in all of my radio control vehicles to this connector here. This connector is known as the AS150, the AS150. It has a seven millimeter bullet connection point, which is going to be very beefy and good for a lot of high performance radio controlled vehicles. Here is how an anti-spark connector works. On the left hand side, we have our speed control connected to a male connector. And on the right hand side, we got our battery pack connected to a female connector. Now where all the magic happens and where the anti-spark feature exists is in this section right here. What we have is on the very tip, this is going to be our first point of contact for the connector. Then in the middle we have this insulation section and then deeper we have the rest of the connector where the main section of the connector actually is getting all the power from our battery pack. Now what happens in this insulation section is very very important. It does separate number one and number two. So number one and number two from each other. And that's important because in between there is a resistor and that resistor has a resistance of 5.6 ohms. Now I did check this connector as well as the XT90 and they both actually have a 5.6 ohm resistor in there. So it's interesting that they actually have the same resistance. Now what happens when we actually insert the connector in is we get the point of contact that initially happens right here. And power then goes from this section all the way down through the wire, but it has to go through this resistor. And the resistor is gonna slow down all of that current by dropping the current to a more reasonable amount to avoid that spark. Then when we continue to push the connector in, it gets its contact here on section two. Now all this happens extremely quick. That's why you can literally put the connector in fairly quickly and it will not spark. As soon as the connector hits this first point, we get lots of power transfer down to the ESC so that we do not have that spark. And that's essentially how our anti-spark connector works. So let's go ahead and start the process of removing all of these connection points and converting them over to our new connector system. 
The big question here is when is it critical and important to change and swap over your connectors to a connector that has this anti-spark type feature? Well, the answer is right around that 6S to 8S mark. 6S, you probably can get away with it, but it is going to slowly eat away at your connectors. When you start to use an 8S or higher cell count battery pack and plug that into your speed control, this is the time that you want to change out the connector for a connector that has that anti-spark feature. Not only are you going to be able to eliminate that very annoying spark or pop sound when you plug the battery pack into your speed control, but going to a different connector that has this anti-spark feature will protect your connectors so that they can live a long life. Okay, here is the first joint I ended up completing. Oddly enough, it is the one that has the resistor located on it. All I need to do now is take this housing or cover, slide it over the connector, and it threads onto those threads right there at the very end of the connector. Here is one that is already done and a positive uh, connector here on our battery pack already done. Now one of the things that I had to do with this particular uh, speed control is extend the wires by an extra inch just to allow it to get out into the cockpit part of the airplane. I had to make sure beforehand that the ripple voltage is not high. I already tested that with this extra one inch. If you don't know why this can be harmful for your electronic speed control, I would highly recommend taking a look at the video that I'm going to link in the description below. And now there's only one thing left to do and that is to plug the batteries into the speed control. So this is critical which one we actually plug in first. We know the resistors on the positive speed control side therefore this has to be the very last connection. I'm gonna make our first connection here on the negative side and here is the very first time I'm using these connectors and plugging in a speed control. So let's go ahead and plug this in. No spark and we have it plugged in. Well guys, that pretty well does it for this video. Don't wait as long as I have to go and swap over all the connectors. This swap when you're moving to higher powered systems is pretty much inevitable. It's going to happen. You may as well just fully commit yourself to those connectors so that you don't end up with 20 pairs that you're gonna have to go and swap out in all your radio control vehicles. As always, like the video if you do and don't forget to hit that sub button so that I can see you in that next video. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next one.